walking around in some kind of fog. I think we're all on a trance. People are talking in symbols. Everyone's sort of floating through this fog of symbols and unconscious feelings. Hello and welcome back to the Lucid Dreaming Podcast. I took a couple of weeks off, but I am back with a fun episode and my first guests on the podcast. But before that, I thought to, again, uh, give updates on recent news. And it seems lately that there is always news in the Lucid Dreaming world. So uh, another Lucid Dreaming headband has launched on Kickstarter. This one is called DreamNet. And it seems like the gadget itself is based on the NeuroSky EEG um, headset, which is good. They've uh, they've had a, an EEG headset for a while on the market, and they have an API. I know a lot of people work with their stuff. And it seems like the software for DreamNet is based on uh, open source software by called Lucid Scribe, uh, Lucid Code by Michael Paul Coder, as he's known on Reddit, on his blog, and on Kickstarter, he's pretty active. So this is this is another interesting one. We'll see how that turns out, and I'm excited that more people are working on these kinds of things. It seems there's just ever growing interest, and I I'm always curious and excited to see what people come out with and what they create in this in this space. And speaking of Lucy Dreaming Headband, um, it is my pleasure to have uh, today on the podcast a couple of people from iWinks who have their Aurora Lucy Dreaming Headband on Kickstarter. The campaign is still going on. I believe there's eight days left. And today I, I spoke with Daniel Schoonover and Jack Payne. So here is the chat I uh, had the pleasure of having with them today. Enjoy. So I guess I wanted to just start with um, a brief history. If you guys want to introduce yourselves and uh, tell me a little about what, what you guys have been up to. Yeah, so uh, this project started years ago, uh, about five years ago, actually, in um, myself and Andrew Smiley, our, our co-founder of iWinks's house. We would just hang out and play music and talk about technology and science and just, you know, come up with our, the next big thing. And it, it, it started over those conversations. I mean, it was, just, it was just a product of us hanging out and talking, playing chess and spending, spending a lot of time together and exploring what, what it was that we were passionate about. And we were both studying engineering at the time at University of Florida and uh, we discovered the world of lucid dreaming uh, when we started talking about lucid dreams and realized we, we both had that passion in common and looked at the market of lucid dream induction devices and were surprised to see that they were uh, really outdated. The technology used were, were years old and, uh, that, and we knew that we could do better. And that's really what inspired this project to, to move forward. Cool. I uh, I should uh, I should just mention I'm I'm talking to Daniel Daniel how do you pronounce your last name? Yeah, it's Schoonover. It's, Schoonover. it's Dutch. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, Jack Payne. Yep, it's an easy name. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack, so how are you involved in the project? Um, I'm kind of the hatchet man. Basically, my whole life has been I'm a jack of all trades. So I've been helping out with writing, copy. You know, creating videos for us here and there, just kind of helping things look presentable and sound good, and I guess marketing unofficially. But we have other people helping out with that too. I'm just kind of making it cohesive. I'm yeah, the glue. Yeah, Jack's the glue. Jack's the glue. Jack and I are good friends uh, since uh, we, we met looking at prospective grad uh, schools four oh. years ago. 
it's been a Actually, while. It's almost five years ago now, that like, spring. Yeah, that's right. It's been almost crazy. five years. That's crazy. And Jack's just been a good friend throughout the whole time. Uh, to me, and as we got closer to actually going public with this thing, we realized we needed a ton more help, and Jack was the perfect guy, and I couldn't be happier to have us uh, have him helping us out. Very cool. So I have to ask, you've been working on it for four or five years now. I, I'm dying to know what, what, what was going through your mind when the first, you know, when Remy launched on Kickstarter and the first device, let alone when, which, which is still kind of different, I'll, I'll let you speak about it, let alone when the Lucy, which is much, much closer to what you guys are doing with a headband, when those launched on Kickstarter. Yeah, the, the Remy thing was, was a blessing. I, bo- both of them were, were really just blessings because they showed that the market exists for this type of thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, it just, it just made us more confident to pursue what we had already been doing for years. Uh, when Remy came out, we were we were shocked to see that so many people would drop significant money on just a chance, literally just a chance to have a lucid dream in the night. Uh, and so that that was that was a great experience when that happened, and just more fuel for the fire that was that that was driving us. And then when Lucy came out, uh, Lucy was sort of a blessing and a curse. Uh, it showed that it showed that you know what we're doing has merit and people are interested in it, but of course the uh, it's unclear what came from and what will come, if anything, from that project. Yeah, the jury is still very much out <laughs> on what Lucy was like. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of holes in their story, but, right. I mean, it's the Internet. You can never really tell what's real and what's not, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, Kickstarter has a pretty good track record with some exceptions and... Uh, uh, I think and they they bring some reliability to the table, but there's always always possible issues. Yeah, and you know, to Kickstarter's credit, the campaign did cancel before anyone actually lost any money on it. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, that little mechanism they have for some safety did come in handy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, as we're speaking now, you guys have passed one hundred and seventy thousand dollars on the campaign. Um, you, your your goal was ninety thousand. How, how far do you think it will go? Uh, does it make a huge difference for you, or once you've sort of covered your goal, do you think this is definitely sufficient for you to not only, you know, make this a reality? You've been working on it for a long time, but actually, like, ship it on time and all those kinds of things. You know, Kickstarter expectations and such. We, uh, I mean, we're very happy with with the response that we've received and with the community. Uh, that's really it's welcomed us with open arms. Uh, it seems that a lot of people have wanted this type of, of product for a while now. And uh, that's been a very positive experience. Um, you know, we, we set our, our minimum goal at a point where we would be confident that we could ship the product as it was when we first released it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now with, with the new update that we're promising, um, you know, of course a little bit extra would, would help us make it as best as, as it can be. But you know, this isn't about money for us. We're 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 here. We're in it for the long haul. This is a passion project, and we've been doing it for years. And just because we don't make you know three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars like other similar campaigns have made, doesn't mean we're you know we're we're gonna walk away from this just for a quick buck. We're I mean we're really passionate about making the ultimate lucid dreaming solution and one that will scale and stay relevant for years to come. That's awesome. So I, I did want to ask about that um, why did you decide to go with a with a headband um, did you did you look into doing a mask you tried mask before have you tried any other sort of what's on the market kind of solutions yeah I mean masks are they're they're somewhat limiting in that not everyone wears a mask to sleep at night right. uh, and so we you know we just wanted to create something that people could wear that wouldn't interfere with their routine their regular routine you know, the, the, the mask is, is certainly an interesting option, something we did think about. Uh, but, you know, we just wanted to stay, we wanted to stay as uh, non-invasive as possible, basically. Another, another interesting point that's kind of come up recently in, like, forums and our conversations with our community is that, you know, we're really focused on having, like, an open API. So we want people to develop new uses for the Aurora in the future. Like, Lucid Dreaming, we've got it. <laughs> you know, we'll have it pretty well said by then. But, mm-hmm. but a nice thing about having a headband instead of a mask, actually, is that you can replace it 
on other parts of your body for different applications. So if someone wants to use it to look at you know, brain signals from something other than frontal lobe, um, you can just you know, put it around. And unlike a mask, which only really fits on one specific spot, you can put it you know, anywhere. You can put it on your arm if you want to measure arm muscle movements and stuff. And yeah. It really opens up a whole lot more possibilities for it in the future, too, which is, like Danny mentioned, it's a big part for us. We're in this for the long haul, and we want to make sure that the product we have not only works amazing for lucid dreaming, but has un like limitless possibilities later. So. Very cool. So um, with the new change um, of having it uh, independent of, uh, of a smartphone as well, do you still plan on um, giving it the ability to be updated, like a software update of just the device oh, yeah. itself? Yeah, that's, that's definitely okay. part of the plan. Uh, we... We, we don't know exactly in which in which way we'll be providing upgrades, whether it's a wireless upgrade via Bluetooth or you have to plug in through USB. We definitely plan to provide firmware upgrades and uh, software upgrades moving forward after we launch. I mean, that's going to be a big part of, of our campaign. The reason we went with Kickstarter is so that we could listen to the community, hear what it is that's going to make this thing as great as possible, uh, and in, in getting that feedback, provide updates that make our software and hardware the best it can possibly be. Right. I, I, this is one of the things I actually really enjoyed about your campaign and what you seem to be doing is interacting with the community. You've already responded to um, requests, to questions. Uh, you just announced, I think, uh, Android support. Um, and uh, I think it's very cool. It seems like this is a, an important component for you guys. Definitely. Yeah, we're, we really believe in the power of the community development and like we're all, all of us are scientists and engineers, and we've seen open source projects, you know, grow and prosper in the past. And we all really like that business model. Like a closed environment is so much more limiting. And since the product is so, so focused in like a creative realm, it would be really hypocritical to close off, you know, the data stream or any other possible uses that other people might want to develop. So, fantastic. Yeah. So about lucid dreaming, when, when was your first introduction to, to lucid dreaming? How did you come about? Was it something natural or you heard about it in a book or what was your... your I mean, I don't know first. Yeah, I mean, I, one of my earliest childhood memories was a lucid dream. I didn't, I didn't know it at the time, but, but later on I realized that it was, it was just this great, this very vivid dream experience that I was kind of aware I was dreaming and that the laws of the real world didn't really apply to me anymore. Uh, so that's I'm kind of biased in that respect that that it was a, you know it was a foundational moment for me, uh, and I've continued to have occasional lucid dreams throughout my life, uh, and I only in the last you know in the in the last decade or so realized that this is this is a real thing that other people experience and it's not you know it's not just me being special it's this is a really cool natural phenomenon that that hasn't been fully realized yet. Uh, through the world of technology, anyway. Right. Jack? What my, you, experience, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> my experience is a little different. Um, so, I'll preface this when I was about five, my dad and I watched the movie Aliens, which is an awesome sci fi action movie. <laughs> the five year old me, it made an impression. Um, and I actually had recurring nightmares for about seven years where I was being chased by H.R. Geiger's, you know, monstrous creation all over through spaceships and whatever else. By the time I hit about age 12, I remember specifically one night, I was having the same dream. I was in a space... Okay, I should preface this also. I'm a huge nerd, actually. <laughs> so I was having this dream where I was in a space station and, you know, the red lights are coming up and down and I'm being chased, as always. And then suddenly, I realized, like, I recognize all this. This isn't real. This is a dream. And at that point, I had suddenly materialized a giant sword, and the hunter became the hunted. And ever since then, I've never actually had a nightmare. <laughs> like, after that, it's like, oh, well, these are just dreams. And I have some weird dreams, too, sometimes, but <laughs> they don't bother me anymore. It's been... So, again, for me, it was like a turning point in my psychological development, I guess. That's remarkable because I have a very, very similar, and I've written about it on my blog okay. a little bit, but a sem very similar experience just with Poltergeist, the movie. At yeah. about age five, this has you know, created a, a, quite a slew of nightmares that 
um, my second lucid dream in, in, in childhood, they occurred, you know, naturally, uh, yeah. few and far between, but still, uh, occurred naturally. And the second one was realizing I'm dreaming while being chased by a monster <laughs> down a, a big hole. Oh. And, you know, with, with that, I, the funny thing is I wasn't able to wake myself up, but I, I found like a, a little device in the dream that helped me wake myself <laughs> up and I was just a mechanism for it somehow. Yeah, yeah, nice. It really makes you realize the uh, the uh, part of the the power of lucid dreaming of dealings with things like nightmares. It's quite amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's way cool. <laughs> Very cool. So, um, well, what would be uh, the future vision for for um, Iwinks and for the Aurora? Because I, you know, again, I, I don't want to talk too much about competition. I did want your your opinions about stuff like neuron and. Another campaign launched today of a similar headband, of course. Um, but Remy came out to the market, and despite not being perhaps the most advanced possible technology of a mask that could be, I think what I dislike the most about how it turned out is that it seemed like they've created it, it has potential, and I've never heard from them again on their Twitter, on their blog. It never, there's no more development. They just created another cool device, which seems awesome, but not related to lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really right. much beyond that. <clears throat> right. So, we, I mean, we plan to keep iWinks relevant in the sleep enhancement community for as long as our visions enable us to. Uh, this lucid dreaming product, or the Aurora, is one of a few sleep enhancement technologies that we have in development right now in iWinks laboratories. Uh, the other ones are still very, very, uh, very exciting. Uh, the, the possibilities that, that they offer are quite tantalizing, but we're just, you know, maybe it's a little bit early to share some of those sure. ideas. Um, but uh, yeah, this isn't this isn't the end for us by any means. I mean, we're we kind of look at this as we're at the foot of the mountain, and I mean. We have we have tons of hurdles to to cross from manufacturing uh, to our beta period, which is going to be crucial. Um, so, we you know we, we've got a lot of work to do, and we have a lot more uh, in the works that than you've seen in, from iWink so far. Fantastic. That's all I'll say. It's <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> um, so I, I I've talked about in, in previous episode too about uh, working myself on a on a on a headband. And I think I came from to it from a similar approach. I was always wait, waiting for someone, for Stephen LeBurge or someone to finally build a proper device uh, until I realized nobody's doing it, so I started working on it myself. And I'm also working on it um, just because I like tinkering with stuff. I like building stuff. I do, I have, of yeah. course, backed the Aurora, and I look forward to getting it. But I just wanted to share one of my ideas if, in case it actually... Um, you know, helps or contributes or something like that. I don't, it's not like I'm, you know, building my own thing and running behind and, and, and waiting to launch it uh, as a competition or something like that. I, I love that it, you're part of the community and it's open source stuff and you're giving access to API and so on. So I wanted, I did want to share this little part in case it's something that makes sense. Uh, what I, w yeah, do. what I wanted yeah, to do it. with the headband to solve the issue where you're creating sound to help people get the sort of notification that they can realize they're dreaming from. I know you're using lights and sound. And for the sound, I'm looking into using bone conduction headphones that might fit into the band itself and can produce audio mm. through cranial uh, sound without making sound externally, waking up your significant other, or having to play it through the phone. I know it's a more complex kind of a mechanism to fit into the headband, but I thought, I thought I'd share the idea. Uh, well, I'll give my two cents. That sounds like a way cool idea, too. Um, are there technologies out there already for doing like bone conduction for sound transfer? Yes. So there are a couple companies that created uh, bone conduction headphones, but that, those are full okay. full set of headphones. I think yeah. they're, uh, I've, I've tasted, uh, tested a couple of them, but there is a company that just finished launching uh, their Indiegogo campaign of a do-it-yourself bone conduction headphones. It's mostly to enhance audio for, I think, people with uh, hearing impaired. So theirs has a microphone yeah. as well to kind of enhance the audio that comes in. But um, I'm using their, it's, they're called Synapse, and I'm using their uh, do-it-yourself kit to, to try to build it into, uh, into the headband itself. So I, I would recommend looking into that. 
that's definitely something I like to look into personally because um, the research I do at school is auditory neuroscience. Wow, yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to uh, to get into that a little. I'll, I'll share the little tidbit of where the idea <laughs> came from when I was in high school and studying physics. In physics class, my teacher brought this little radio and connected wires out of it into this little wooden stick and said, gave me this and said, bite down on this. And as soon as I bit down on it, suddenly I'm hearing audio music inside my head, sort of like coming from nowhere. That's awesome. That's that blew awesome. my mind. That's a good teacher, like just blowing your mind without explaining anything <laughs> quite yet. Um, All right. We need to look into this a little yeah, more. Check, check it yeah, out. It's, a, it's an interesting. <laughs> that sounds awesome. really cool. Do you think, can it be done? I mean, I, I assume it works through some sort of vibrating technology yes. and and you can you can make it very crude from little pieces a, a piece of metal and i mean it's just it's vibration anyway as long as it doesn't create like uh if it doesn't i think on low frequencies you can make it vibrate without creating ex sort of external audio and if it's you know near the sense. temples mm -hmm. or, or or there are some placements of the bone that work best um and okay. again I'll, I'll send you the link but check out the synapse uh, do-it-yourself kit sort of thing that they created kind of um, very interesting I, I think if that yeah if that can be done without ruining the EEG signal I think it's a very that's, promising, that's a good question my very promising yeah, direction. My, my thought was as soon as you're detecting and in, in, in that, that you're in a dream perhaps at that point the EEG is not as important as long as we already detected that you're in theta or, or in, a, in a dream and can signal but that huh. might actually be an issue with either the accelerometer or messing up the EEG, but I don't know, perhaps there's a software right. solution to that sort of conflict. Yeah, and, and there is. There's ways to filter out those types of right. signals, especially if you have a reference that you can compare with the EEG signal. Right. Very cool. So I, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I, I wanted to thank you for, for talking to me and uh, carving out time for this. Um, Oh, it's our pleasure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. No, this is great. We love doing stuff like this and hearing hearing from people like you who have clearly spent a lot of time thinking about this type of problem. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I look forward to the Aurora, and I wish you the best of luck with the remaining time on the campaign and waiting to hear more updates as you progress on uh, building this thing. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Great. Thank yeah. you, Jack. Yeah. All right, Jay. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a good one. So that was my little chat with... Daniel and Jack from iWinks. I just wanted to thank them again for coming on the podcast and talking to me about the Aurora. Check out the Aurora on uh, Kickstarter. I will link to the campaign in the show notes. Coincidentally, we were speaking about bone conduction technology by a company called Synapse, which is Synapse with a C, and the DreamNet lucid dreaming headband on kickstarter is by a company called synapse with an s and i will link to that as well to both of them at the show notes so once again thank you for listening as always you can reach me through email at contact at lucidsage.com or find me on twitter at the lucid sage thank you sweet and lucid dreams <laughs>